typically girls or guys that are getting hurt at a younger age emotionally. Girls, pretty much agreement on that. Girls, yeah, typically. And this is these are generalities, um, and we can get into all some of the reasons and break that down. But typically, girls are a little more emotionally fine-tuned at a younger age, and I think they are also looking for love because of that. A little more mature and emotionally fine-tuned at a younger age. They're also looking for love at a younger age. And again, when you risk love, you risk hurt. Until you risk love, you don't risk hurt, which tells me a lot of the young men, up to a point, are not risking love yet. They're saying it, but they're not putting their heart into it. Because then they would hurt too. And uh, a lot of times at a young age, they're just like, I just want to get some. I'm not really you know, in it for love. And uh, yet, usually the girls are, to start with, at least. And um, now some guys say, well, the girls are pushing sex on, on us. Does that maybe happen in a lot on the college campus? Well, the girls are just as aggressive about sex as the guys. You don't have to be speaking for yourself. But just, <laughs> we used to dream of that when I was your age. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it wasn't really that way. Um, but anyway, well, OK. Um, what was I just saying that I lost track? Girls 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 yeah, so yeah. Uh, typically, girls don't start out that way. A lot of guys start out just wanting to experience sex. That physical attraction, visual stimulation. These guys are visually stimulated, just want sex. And I've never met a little girl growing up saying, I just can't wait till I'm old enough to have meaningless sexual friction with guys. <laughs> don't even know my name. That's just what I dream of. No, they're not thinking about that. They can love, romance, the prince, etc. And there's nothing wrong with that stuff. And, uh, and yet our culture says, uh, young lady, um, you have to date real young or you're a loser. They get that message in seventh and eighth grade. And uh, oh, and by the way, you have to look like the girl on the cover of that uh, Cosmo or Essence or some magazine and be airbrushed beautiful, or you're also a loser there. Oh, and by the way, since you're not perfectly beautiful, you better find some guy to say you're beautiful to define your identity, because if, if he doesn't define you as beautiful, then I guess you're not. These are the cultural lies. And so your beauty as an individual and as a person depends on some boy saying so. That's a lot of pressure. It also creates a dangerous situation. It means most of us are all real insecure as teens. It means here's this insecure treasure of a young lady who uh, was a beautiful little bundle of femaleness when she was seven, missing her front teeth, quite a beautiful treasure then, not because she had a boyfriend, but now she's 15, 16, 14, whatever, and she thinks, oh, I've got to have a boy to validate my existence. Or sometimes, well, now I'm just not beautiful. It's a cultural lie. And it's rammed in their faces. And um, what do you do with that? Well, to me, um, this is getting a little tough, but it would make sense if we would communicate to the girls, hey, guess what? You know what? It might be smart to hold off on the dating until you sense that you have value and beauty and worth in and of who you are. That might be a great idea because you know what? You'd be much better then if you knew who you are and where you want to go. You'd be in a much better position to figure out who you want to be with. I'm sure if I heard some stories, I mean, some people probably hooked up some real losers. Um, that they thought were just so cool to start with, and a lot of pain. And I'm going to bounce this out because guys are getting hurt as, as well, but I want to just say the girls tend to be getting hurt younger, and that pain runs deep. I don't know, this might sound a little weird, but I think there's a, an emotional, almost spiritual parallel to the way your bodies are made, uh, young ladies. I mean, in the sense that sex, you're on the receiving end in a very real way. Sex is something entering into your body. You're, it's happening more than inside to you. You're, and, I, and for men, it's something outside of us. And I think there's an emotional parallel to that almost in that sex affects you on an emotional level really deep. And, um, and, and it, it can, and almost like you can kind of hold, hold on to those, good or bad, hold on to the memories on a deeper level. It just seems to be the way females are. And, um, Oh, I mentioned that girl, by the way, that you know, guys are saying some of the girls are pushing sex. Here's what happens to that girl. First time, she doesn't want just sex. She wants love. She wants acceptance, all that. And she culturally responds, it's what I'm supposed to do. She does it. She gets hurt and used. Maybe a little while later, she tries again. She gets hurt and used again. Pretty soon, she says, yeah, every time I try for love, I just get hurt and used. This is just ripping my heart out. So I'm not going to risk love. 
I'm going to shut down my heart. I'm going to lower the bar of my expectations and see if I pretend I don't want love, it won't hurt so much when I don't get it. And I'll just settle, keyword settle, for some attention, some hookups, some parties, some pleasure, some fun, whatever, some drama in my life. And it's settling. I wanted real love. I'm settling for this. Some attention. You get plenty of attention if you're having sex uh, easily. Plenty of attention. Not much love. I think it becomes harder and harder to find the real love when we're hanging out with people. And, uh, and so this has happened, and it breaks my heart. I've got four granddaughters and a grandson. And uh, I'm saying they're beautiful. I have the most beautiful granddaughters on earth. Um, but I look at them, and I'm just like, Haley's eight, and Lila's two, and Harper's one and a half, and Heidi's one. Not all from the same child, obviously. But, um, <laughs> but and I just think, what's gonna, what is going to be that? Is it the pressure going to be in sixth grade for them to have sex? Where's this, you know, where's this going? And, um, and I just know how much people are getting hurt. So it, it hurts me to see it, but. So my thought is to girls, whether you've already been there sexually or not, again, I'm shocked that people are not, but if you have, just to think, the value's still there, still intact. Maybe wrap the present back up for a while. At least do you feel good about the, the present, you being the present, of course. I think as human beings, we underestimate the value of this gift, not just our God, but everything in it. You don't have much more valuable thing to offer another human being than yourself. Why not value it that way? I mean, we give our sex to people we wouldn't even trust with our iPod or something. And we're going to share bodily fluids and maybe create a new life with them. And, I, and I'm like, have you, not, have you not learned in this world yet that people can be really good at lying? And that sex is quite a motivator in life, right up there is air, food, and water? And that there are guys that exist that will do and say anything to get some? I mean, don't we know that? Do we have to experience that over or learn that by experience. So the whole thought is, if, if you're at the present, I'm kind of hold the bar high until you really feel good about who you are, kind of sense, who am I, where am I going? Who do I want? What am I looking for in a guy? Get all that settled. I feel beautiful about me, okay? Then, um, you're, in a way, by the standard high, it's kind of like a jerk firewall you have up because the guys that just want sex are gonna move on. The guy that wants love, he's gonna say, wow, <laughs> um, this is, She's different. I mean, this is quite valuable here. Because when you see your value, somebody else does. So I just think the present of that concept of the high standard, when guys want sex, they just want something easy. The high standards just get in the way. I also believe that the traditional old-fashioned idea that girls were told, girls, if you will hold a high standard, the guy that when he's looking for love, when a guy is in love-seeking mode, he's looking for someone he can admire, respect, and trust. He's looking for that. You, in a way, you want somebody you admire more than yourself. And you, you know what? That person actually becomes a motivator for you to like kick your butt into gear a little more, do what you have to do to get where you need to go. It's a, it's a strong, probably the strongest motivator in life, one of them. And I think what our culture's doing to, to women is saying, here, take this awesome gift of you and at great risk, connect sexually with some young guy that you really don't know that well. Maybe he doesn't even know himself and you're not all that sure where he's going with his life. But you're supposed to share bodily fluids with him. Give him this really ultra valuable gift. Why? Because uh, that's what's normal. And by doing that, it's actually demotivating the guys. In other words, I mean, how many guys are really focused these days. How many guys even getting through college, if they get through, this, I'm not picking on anybody, and if I was in your shoes, guys, I'd probably be more off course than anybody, but just to say, so many guys even graduating from college, what the heck am I gonna do with my life? No focus, partying their way through college, chasing skirts and boobs and all, and ended up like, dang, I don't know what the heck's going on. Well, why? Because some young lady is rewarding their bad behavior with a bunch of good sex. Here, you're not going anywhere with your life, you're not doing anything, all you're doing is partying and skipping school. Let me reward your bad behavior with some really good sexual friction now. That's what our culture is telling girls to do. And we're basically reducing you to just another bod in the whole lineup of bods. And if you can put your stuff out there on MySpace or whatever, you can show your nudity, you can you know, lift your shirt, whatever it is in the culture, then somehow you're going to attract some really great guy to you. I'm saying no. 